All right, so as Guido mentioned, I'm going to uh, kind of give you an overview of the administration console. You just saw Brett walk you through the process of developing an app on our local SDK and then deploying it to Google servers. I'm going to spend the next 10 or hopefully 5 minutes kind of going through the process of monitoring and managing that application once it's running on Google servers. So for the purposes of this, I've written a, a small application that's basically exactly like Brett's app. It's another, uh, it's another guestbook app, and you can post and, and read posts that other people have read. And in this app, I've written an intentional error and, and, and hooked it up so that if I click on the logo here in the corner, I get a stack trace. And so I'm an admin of this application, and that's why I can see the stack trace. And my users would just see a, a, a 500 error. But in order to monitor this app and see how it's doing while it's running on Google servers, I'm going to use the administration console. That's our UI. Here I've logged into the administration console at appengine.google.com, and I can see a list of the apps for which I'm an administrator. My cool app is the only one. That's the app I just showed you. So I'm going to click into this, and now I'll have the dashboard page. Now here on the dashboard page, we try to provide everything that you'll need at a glance to see how your app is doing while it's running in production. I've got a graph of queries over time, you know, graphed as queries per second, and that's, that help me, helps me gauge the popularity of my app. And I also have a list of quotas. Google App Engine uses a quotaing system to make sure that applications don't monopolize any of the systems that they're running on. You'll hear more about this in a bit. But here I can see the amount of CPU I've used, the amount of data I've sent and received, the amount of emails I've sent, and the amount of megabytes stored. This is over a rolling 24-hour period, and as you get close to the limits that we've set, You'll see, the, you'll see bars move over to the right. Below that, I can see a list of popular URIs and error-prone URIs. Now, in the error-prone URIs, you'll notice broken page. This is the error that I intentionally added to my app. So I can use this while it's running on Google servers to note where users are seeing problems. Now, while Brett was working on the local SDK, he was able to look at a live feed of the application's log on the, on the, uh, the console. You don't have this ability while you're running on, Google's, on Google servers, but fortunately we provide you a log viewer in the admin console. Here I can see a list of logs, and the UI is pretty simple. I simply select the minimum severity level I want to look at, and if I want to, I can specify a particular date and time that I'm interested in. Now here you can see a couple of hits on this broken URL I, I, I wrote, and if I want I can actually expand this and take a look at the details. Here I can see the full stack trace, as well as the request information. Now next, I'm going to take a look at the data that I have stored as part of this app. The data viewer provides two different ways of looking at this data. Either I can select by a particular type that I've stored in the data store, and there's only one type for this application, it's greeting, or I can write a custom GQL query. I'm going to try that. Select star from greeting, where content equals first post. Oops. Exclamation point. Thank you. Okay. So here's the entity that I found. And I can actually click into it and change it. So I'm going to correct the spelling. And save it. Now if I go back to my app, which is serving live, I can refresh, and sure enough, the spelling is corrected. Now, as Kevin mentioned before, you can add developers to your application if you want to work collaboratively. Once you add a developer and they've accepted the invitation, they'll have all the same administration rights that you have. They can look at the data, the logs, and they can deploy new versions. Now, speaking of versions, we also support a version control system, which keeps track of every major version that you deploy. Every time you deploy, you, sub you specify which version you want. Sorry, every time you deploy an application, you specify which version you're deploying. And here you can select between major versions that are running. So in version 2.2, I have an error, which I showed you before. But I know that in version 1.1, that error wasn't there. So I'm going to roll back. I've clicked roll back, and now I go refresh. And if I click this, it should be fine. So you can see I've switched major versions instantly. And this can be helpful if you accidentally deploy something you shouldn't have. The last thing I'm going to show you is adding a domain. You can serve any App Engine app off of any domain that you actually own using Google Apps. So to do this, I'm going to enter a domain that I happen to have registered, which is a domain that I own.com. 
and I'm going to add that domain. So I simply sign into Google Apps. Accept the terms of service and specify the subdomain I want to serve this off of. Maybe I wanted four W's. <laughs> Now if I uh, hit this URL, the domain that I own.com, there we go. So that, that uh, really concludes the demonstration. When you're writing the app locally, you've got a great window into what you're doing. And we're trying to provide you the next best thing while you're actually running in production to millions of users. This tool can help you debug and also modify things that you need to while you're up and running.